It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to give him a shout. It's time to tell him that he's worthy. It's time to tell him that he's holy. It's time to tell him that he is matchless. Right now, just tell him, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify your name, Lord. Come into this house. Come into our midst. Be here by your presence. Fill me up with your spirit, God. I pray that you would do something miraculous in your people this morning, God. Oh, Lord, that the word that you have would change lives forever and forever. God, you are worthy. You are holy this morning. Beyond the circumstances that are going on right now, God, you are worthy of the praise. We glorify your name right now, God, and let your spirit. Spirit arise in this place. Let your spirit rise in homes. Let your spirit rise in people, God. And we will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that is due your name. Come on right now in your house. You can praise him. You can glorify him. And you can praise him with me. He is glorious. I praise your name this morning, God. You're worthy, worthy, worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to glorify him. We're going to raise him high this morning. Come on in your house. You can stand up. You can uh, put your hands together. Come on in with your family. You can, you can sidestep. You can praise him however you feel like it. But come on, right now is the time to praise the Lord. When you come to this presence,
name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you. We magnify you. And Lord, we've come to worship you. Hallelujah. You are still worthy of the glory. You are still worthy of the honor. Oh, Lord, you 
are the ancient of days, God. Oh, Lord, you are everything to us, Lord, and we praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We give you all of our worship, God. In this moment, we just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for keeping us, Lord, for sustaining us, God. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you, God, for you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. We give you honor. We give you reverence. We worship you. We praise you. And we love you this morning. Just tell God, I love you. I love you. I love you. Genesis family, here are your announcements for today. Please continue praying for Pastor as he remains in the ICU in critical condition. We are believing for a turnaround in his situation. We continue to come together as a family and pray that God's will and plan shall come to pass. We thank you for your continual intercession. We want to recognize our December birthdays. Happy birthday to Cindy Witten, Andy Ruiz, Michelle Thompson, Julia Swing, and Darren Yasukawa. We hope that you enjoyed your birthdays this month. It's time for tithe and offering. As this year continues on, we are aware of our need to maintain the church finances. Thank you for your loyalty and faithfulness to God and Genesis. Here are ways to give. PayPal, info at genesisworship.com. Venmo, genesis-wc-1. You can drop off or mail a check to the church at 495 Hawthorne Avenue, San Bruno, California, 94066. We are all aware that this Christmas season of 2020 is very different for many, but we keep hope in our hearts, thanking the Lord for the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please prepare your hearts for a fresh word from Pastor Santino that will begin in just a few moments. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord and happy Christmas Sunday. We pray that you're blessed right now. We pray that you're in a spirit of expectation. We pray that you're in a spirit of jubilation for everything that's happened thus far in your life, everything that God's doing in your life, and for the season that we're in. This month, we've been in a series called It's Christmas Time. And we said last week that Christ is always in the middle of Christmas. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter the heartache, the turmoil, the pain that you might find yourself in. Christ is always in the middle of Christmas. So just be encouraged right now and know that, believe it and receive it, that Christ is right there in the middle of your life and he refuses to let you go. This Sunday, I'm so excited and I'm so ready to give a word from the Lord to you. This is the second and the last sermon in the series that we're going to be dealing with for this month on Christmas. And the Lord said, I want you to give the people another story on the nativity. I, I, I want you to give the people another story from the, Christmas, from the Christmas time. And as I began to look through the word, there was a story that just popped out at me. And I knew it was the one for this, for this Sunday and for you. So if you have a Bible, would you do me a favor? Would you turn to the book of Luke chapter two and beginning at verse eight, we're gonna start and we're gonna end at verse 11. So if you have a Bible, Luke, Luke uh, chapter two, verse eight, ending at verse 11. If you have it, say amen, amen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And we're gonna deal with that in a moment. And they were terrified, or the King James says, I believe, they were sore afraid. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for this service. Father, I thank you that there is always a message from you. 
I think that there's always something to learn, there's always something to know, and there's always something to receive from your hand. So God, I ask that what's in this word would be made manifest in the lives of your people, and that what they receive from you will change them forever by your spirit. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. Anoint us to hear and anoint us to receive this day what you have to say to us in your holy and your mighty name. And it's in the name of Jesus we all say amen and amen. Let's look at the first verse, uh, verse uh, number eight, as it gives us a context to where we're going. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The story that we're dealing with in Luke, this nativity story starts out with shepherds. The shepherds are out watching their sheep. They're out doing their work. They find themselves living in a field. The Bible says that they lived in fields. It kind of gives you a picture as to who they are and where they come from and their standing. And the Bible says that they're watching their flocks at night. Well, it's kind of interesting because you wonder, why would they watch flocks by night? Why wouldn't they do their work during the day? Well, historical uh, experts tell us that during that time and during that season, it was very warm outside. It was, it was hot. So the shepherds would watch their flocks at nighttime because at that time it was a perfect time to do work. And so we have these shepherds who are out watching the sheep, watching the goats, watching all manner of cattle, and they're doing their job diligently, and they're doing it at nighttime. How many of you know at nighttime, certain things can happen? And the Bible tells us that in the nighttime, there's something that transpires. There's something that takes place. There, there, there's something that occurs in the life of these shepherds. And what happens? an angel shows up. An angel comes to them, and, and the Bible says that it was the angel of the Lord. Now, it wasn't just an ordinary angel. An ordinary angel would be good enough, but it's the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord appears to these shepherds, and he says to them this. He says, today, everybody say today. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. This, this angel of the Lord makes a declarative statement to these shepherds and directs the statement right at them. They're taken by his words. They're, they're taken by his, his message. And they realize that this is not a normal occurrence. This is something special and it's something different. They say to themselves, oh my goodness, what just happened? Here we are doing work by night alone in a field. And an angel comes to us and tells us a message that we've never heard before. He gives us a message that we've never received before. This is something that we could never imagine or dream of or think of. And we have to do something with what we've heard. The angel gives them a special message. Everybody say it's a special message. It's a special message designed to enable them to understand that something is coming that they have never imagined or never discussed prior to this night. It's a special gift just for them. There was something waiting in the atmosphere. There was something waiting in the heavenlies. There was something waiting in time just for these shepherds who were all alone doing their work. There was something waiting just for their hearing and just for their life. And it was waiting right for that specific and that special moment. And God said, I have something to give to them that no one else could give them. And I'm going to send an angel to give them this message. And it was something that was different and unique. This gift was what? It was a savior. And he said that the savior has been born to you all today. The word Savior is very interesting because the word Savior indicates a deliverer. He says, the angel says, he says, a deliverer is coming to you. A deliverer is coming to your life. A deliverer is coming to your existence. You shepherds have found yourself living in a state of lowliness. You found yourself living in a state all alone. You do your job by night. You, you find yourself just talking to sheep and talking one with the other. And people don't see you as significant. But I have something for you, the angel says, that's going, to, that's going to change your life forever. I have something specific to give you. 
that I haven't given to anybody else. And the word says he's been born to you today. The word today there means this very day, this very hour, this time. A savior has been born to you today. The Bible says that the word born to you, the word born to you also means in a biblical sense, he's been produced to you. That's another meaning of the word born to you. He, he's been produced to you. Uh, there's been something that has changed and transpired. And this baby that's born, this savior that's born has been produced in your life. It's something that's awaiting you. It's something that's been made available to you. And when something is produced, you have the potential and the probability to attain it. Understand this morning that this thing, this baby that was produced was Christ. The Bible says he is the Christ. It's the Greek word uh, Christos. It's the anointed one. There is someone who's anointed that is being released to you. There's someone that's anointed that's been born to you. There's something that's anointed that's been produced to you. I don't have time to go into a deeper level, but there's something that's been made available to your life and it's the anointed one. It's the separated one. It's the one who's destined and designed to accomplish a mission that no one else has ever done before and he's been made available to you. Everybody say he's been made available to you and to the shepherds. When Christ is revealed, the separating marker of his identity takes action. What does that mean? When Christ comes into a place, when Christ is produced in a place, the thing that makes him separate takes action. The thing that makes him different takes action. The thing that makes him unique takes action. Whenever Jesus shows up, something happens. You understand that he, the Christ, the anointed one, the Christos is not just an ordinary man. He's not just an ordinary prophet. He's just not a miracle worker. No, he's someone specific. He's somebody special. He's somebody powerful. And the anointing that he is will take root in the lives of people. And the fruit of that root will manifest itself and it will change people forever and forever. Jesus is the anointed of the Father. Jesus is the monogenes of the Father. Jesus is the one who says, I and the Father are one. I'm anointed to do something specific, and I came to this earth to release who I am and to bring restoration and redemption and wholeness to everyone who wants it. Understand that Jesus, your Jesus, is not like anybody else. No one else is like Jesus. No one else looks like Jesus. No one else talked like Jesus. No one else sounded like Jesus. No one else walked like Jesus. No one had his mind. No one had his essence. No one had anything like him. He was one of a kind all by himself and no one could touch him. That's why the disciples looked at him after he worked a miracle. And they said, what manner of man is this? He's different because he's anointed. Understand that whenever you're anointed, you're different. And whenever Jesus moved in what he was, he was always different. His purpose manifested every time he came on the scene. When he came as a baby in the manger, his purpose manifested. The angel said, today, a savior has been born to you and he is Christ the Lord he has appeared to you and his purpose is now extant. His purpose now exists. He, the Christ, the anointed one, is now ready to move into the confines and the specificity of the purpose and the reason for why he's graced this planet. The anointing that rests upon him is going to take root. The anointing that rests upon him is going to do a work and it's going to start now and it's going to start today. He is the one. Everybody say he's the one. Big O, the one destined and separated to bring deliverance to everyone that needs it. You might need it right now. You might need the deliverance right now. You might have a healing that you need 
You might have a breakthrough that you need. You might need to have a release that needs to be changed and moved into another state. Well, I've got news for you. The anointing that rested on Jesus is ready to do something for you. The anointing that was alive and active is ready to do something for you. Everything that Jesus was, everything that rested upon him is ready for you. And the Bible says that when that Christ comes, he will do something that no one else has done. This anointing, this Savior, this Jesus can be available to anyone, from the least to the greatest, from the weakest to the one who thinks they're strong, from the saved to the unsaved, from the one who lives in a lowly state of existence like the shepherd did to the one who lives in a palatial estate like many did at that time. The anointed one is available to anyone. Anyone can accept and receive the anointing of Jesus. We find in the Bible that Jesus was no respecter of persons. Jesus never walked by anybody and passed them by because of who they were or where they came from. No, the moment somebody had a need, Jesus showed up. The moment somebody needed a healing, the anointing showed up. The moment somebody needed to be released, the anointing that was on him manifested itself and they found themselves the recipient of the fruit that came from the anointing that lived on the anointed one. I have news for you this morning. The anointed one is ready to do something for you. The anointed one is ready to uh, make something different happen in your life that you needed most. The anointed one is ready to speak to you and to tell you who you are and where you're going. The anointed one is ready to heal your body. He's ready to heal your mind. He's ready to touch your soul. He's ready to do a work in you that no one else can do. He's about ready to turn you inside out and right side up by the power that lives within the, the anointing that he's been graced with by the Holy Ghost. I have news for you. Whatever you need, the anointing will fix it. Whatever you need, the anointed one will fix it. Whatever you have need of this morning and this day on this Christmas Sunday, the anointing will fix it. And we find that this, the angel said today, everybody say today. He said today, this Savior, this Christ has been born to you. I have to tell you this prophetically. Jesus Christ is ready to be produced, made available to your life today. He's ready to do something in this moment and in this season. He's ready to touch your life and to speak to you this very day. It's the reason for why he came. It's the reason for why he manifested himself. It's the reason for why he, him and the father who had the same agreement and plan from eternity past and manifested here in Luke 2. It's the same purpose. He said, I'm going to come to do something for anyone who needs it. And I'm going to do it in the season of their life called today. And today, this moment, this hour, this second, the anointing and the anointed one is about ready to touch your life. He's not the baby lying in a manger anymore, but he is the almighty, the all-powerful son of the living God. He is the Christos. He is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He is the Mashiach. He is the one who was prophesied in the Old Testament and made manifest in the new. He's the one who came to redeem you and to save your soul. And he's the only one who was anointed to do it. And he's ready to be that person to you even now. He wants to make himself real to your life. He's ready. He's willing. He's able to do a work that only he can do. Because a separated, anointed God can only do a work that he is designed and fashioned to do. The Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. The Bible says that the anointing releases the burden. The Bible indicates to us that the anointing can take away sickness and disease. It can bring relief and release to every life. And it can be done for you today. I want to encourage you and challenge you right now to search and to be open for the anointed one. For that Christ that was born to the shepherd. He wasn't just born to the shepherds. 
He was born to you. Right there where you are. His birth was for you. And so I want to challenge you to search for him, to look for him, and to await what he's going to do in your life. For if he revealed himself to the shepherds and made himself available for them, he'll do it for you. I want to tell you this morning that God Almighty, the Christ, the Anointed One, wants to touch your life today. Everything that lies within the confines of the anointing can be yours. Everything that you need in your life can be yours. Everything you've been praying for can be yours. Everything that you've been hoping for can be yours. Everything that you've been searching for can be yours. The very answer to the question that you have can be yours today. And God says to you and to me, if you'll simply search for me like these shepherds did, I will make myself available to you and I'll reveal myself to you. And the very thing that you need, I will give you not tomorrow, not next week and not next year. I'll give it to you today. God is ready to give you what you need today by the anointing because he is the anointed one. If there was no anointed one, there would be no anointing. If there was no anointed one, there would be no healing. If there was no anointing, there would be no deliverance. But I got good news for you this day. There is an anointing and he's ready to touch your life. So I want to challenge you right now, right here, right here in this moment, begin to search for him. Begin to seek after him. Begin to look for him. And everything that you need will be yours. Right there in your home, right there in your office, right there in your car, right there wherever you're watching, I want you to throw your hands up. I want you to throw one hand up and say, God, I'm looking for you now. And if I look for you, you shall be found. I I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm really, my eyes are peeled for you. And so I ask that you give me what I need right now because I know that you've been produced and birthed to me. So, Father, I ask right now that every single person watching this broadcast today will be touched by you because they've searched for you. Father, I ask that you heal them. I ask that you deliver them. I ask that you set them free. I ask that you give them a release. I ask that you give them a healing. I ask that you give them a healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Touch their mind, touch their heart, touch their bodies, their souls, and their spirit. Touch the very ill that they're dealing with. Touch the sickness even now. Touch the malady even now. Touch the disease even now by the power of your spirit and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth receive the anointing receive the deliverance receive the healing for the anointed one has been born to you and everything that lies within the anointing is yours today now in this moment and in this season it is yours right now and in the name of Jesus Pull it, grab it, receive it. It's yours now. I speak a blessing to you. I speak a deliverance to you. I speak a healing to you. Because the anointing has been made available to you. So move and live in your freedom. Live in your healing. Live in your anointing. Live in your breakthrough. For God makes everything that he is available to you. It's yours right now. Not, not five minutes from now. Not an hour from now. It's yours right now. I pray that you were blessed by this message. I pray that God has changed your life with this message. I pray that he has done something to you and spoken to you. I pray that he's changed the inside of who you are to reflect what he wants to give you because of the anointing. Next week, we have something incredible for you. Next Sunday will be the last Sunday of the year. And we were wondering, we were trying to figure out what is it that we want to do for the last Sunday of the year? We found ourselves at the end of the Christmas season. It's, it's all over by next Sunday. What are we going to do? And the Lord impressed upon me. He said, I want you to teach a verse that will, is yet to be determined. I want you to teach it. And then I want you to pray with the people. 
And so next Sunday is actually going to be a little teaching and then it's going to be a prayer service. So we're going to ask everybody to do, everybody who's watching, uh, whether you're a part of Genesis Worship Center or not, you might be a faithful supporter, you might be a faithful viewer. We want you to send in your prayer request. It could be one, it could be two, it could be a hundred. It doesn't matter. Whatever you have need of, we want you to send in your prayer request all week long. You can text or message the church. You can text or message Gina D'Angelo. You can text or message me. You can email the church. You can hit us up on Facebook, message us on Facebook, somehow send something through the mailbox. It doesn't matter. We'll be here to check it. But please send in your prayer request all week long. It could be for your health. It could be for your finances. It could be for a job. It could be for a son or daughter, somebody who's lost. It could be for your boss or your mother-in-law. It doesn't matter. We're going to pray for anything and everything. So please, please send in your prayer requests. We have about six days. Please send them in quickly. And we are going to pray for all of them next Sunday morning. And we're going to end the year in prayer and in power, believing for a great year next year and to catapult us into something marvelous on January 1st, 2021. Once again, we want to thank you for being with us. We want to thank you for watching with us. May God bless you. May he keep you. Please keep all of us in prayer. Please keep supporting the ministry. Please keep your pastor in prayer. If you want to update on how he's doing, you can get on Facebook. Uh, Gina D'Angelo, she has an update every day of how he's doing. So please keep your pastor in prayer. He needs your prayers. We believe that God is going to do something magnificent in his life. And we're believing for a great return. We're believing for a renewal. We're believing for him to be healed and to be restored and to get out of that bed. So you stay praying. You stay supporting. You stay supporting this ministry, please. And we thank you for it. May God bless you for it. Once again, thank you for being with us. We love you. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week and have a great Christmas. Give great gifts to your friends and your family and may you be blessed as you receive them as well. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you on Wednesday night.